<laughs> Good morning, TikTok. And here are here's the usual announcement. Welcome to TikTok Live. Have fun interacting with your viewers and real-time creators. Must be 18 or older to go live. Yeah, I think I can safely say I'm 18. I think I can safely say I'm 18 for the um, one, two, three, third time. <laughs> so that tells you something. Anyway, uh, good morning. Time to make some breakfast. Uh, as something of a change from all the usual political and religious crap going on on uh, TikTok Live. So let's get started, shall we? And let's bring out uh, the cast iron. There we go. Off to a good start, I hope. Nice cast iron Dutch oven here. And let's start with some water. Uh, yeah, like the uh, title here says, we are going to be making hasty pudding for breakfast this morning. And what the heck is hasty pudding? Hasty pudding, it was a recipe often used by soldier, by American soldiers in the uh, Revolutionary War and the Civil War. Um, it is a very simple recipe of um, cornmeal boiled into a uh, paste or a pudding, I guess I should say, and then served with sweeteners, usually like uh, maple syrup or uh, and butter or molasses. And yes, I know in the south, in the south, uh, southern U.S., as they say, that's grits. Well, guess what? Yes, it is. In the north, they called it hasty pudding. Although this seems to have been forgotten over the years. I mean, while people still know what grits are, and for that matter, people still know what oatmeal is, uh, people seem to have forgotten hasty pudding. About the only thing people remember hasty pudding is um, the Harvard Hasty Pudding Group, the uh, Hasty Pudding Club, which uh, typically hosts... Uh, uh, actors and film directors in a roast each year. That's the thing they're most famous for. But in fact, that is what uh, they, th that in fact is what this is named after. There we go, that should be more than enough salt. Um, in that, again, they called it hasty pudding and well, what can I say? It was a uh, very simple recipe from the days long before, decades or even a century or more before breakfast cereal. This was uh, what people made for breakfast when they are, were on a very, very limited budget. You know, no bacon, no eggs, just simply boiled together cornmeal. So now that we've done that, let's put this cover on to help bring this to a boil faster. And that's of course, well, as that's why I, that's why my channel here on um, TikTok is called Cast Iron Chaos. Let's introduce a uh, large cast iron Dutch oven, a uh, number eight size. Although interestingly, the Dutch ovens, uh, they mark the size number they have here actually was the uh, diameter of the uh, pot itself. Uh, a number eight cast iron skillet would be about 10 inches in diameter rather than uh, eight inches. Um, also, I'm told, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm told that Lodge Cast Iron actually discontinued this size of their uh, Dutch oven, which is a shame because it's very convenient. And hello, uh, folks. Uh, hello, uh, pretty, so pretty, and Alec Gunn and Sarcastic One. Uh, yeah, I do realize that uh, here on TikTok Live, pretty much folks just scroll through and stop at something that catches their eye. And I can only hope that uh, this, um, again, provides something of an alternative to the usual crap going on on TikTok Live. Yeah, no, I don't have very many good things to say about TikTok Live. It's far too full of trolling because... You know, all of these channels on TikTok Live that uh, say they are here for debates, they are not here for debates. They are here really pretty much to troll and to get people ticked off. Uh, that's why there's so many uh, posts by uh, idiots supporting Trump or idiots uh, pushing flat earth or idiots 
pushing whatever our religious uh, bunk they're uh, trying to push. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. What's your favorite food to cook on the cast iron? Oh, boy. Uh, what, what isn't my favorite food to cook in cast iron? I mean, I mean, look on TikTok, on cast iron TikTok, and you'll see people cooking steak and cornbread and steak and chicken and steak and um, pizza and steak. You get the idea. Uh, it seems like when you have a cast iron pan, there seems to be some rule that you have to cook steak in it and almost nothing else. And that's certainly not true. So, <laughs> in fact, as I said, this is, a, in fact, a uh, smaller size Dutch oven. <laughs> I was going to say steak. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I am uh, one of those... Uh, I am one of those nutcases who is uh, obsessed with cast iron, or so it seems to be, in that I've got uh, quite a collection of cast iron pans, and I do almost all of my cooking in cast iron because it's fun, and also because it does a great job cooking. So uh, that's why that's one reason why I decided to make hasty pudding this morning, make something completely different in cast iron from the usual stuff they make on uh, cast iron TikTok. As I said, this is a recipe from the uh, Revolutionary War and the Civil War. Uh, so that along with their hardtack bread, they got to make uh, hasty pudding or, again, as they call it in the South, grits. And it's really no more than cornmeal boiled together into a uh, thick paste and then uh, flavored with um, uh, maple syrup and butter. Or again, if you don't, if you didn't have maple syrup, you would probably use molasses. Um, yeah, because sugar was a luxury, especially if you were a foot soldier for either uh, either in the Revolutionary War days or during uh, Civil War days. Encourage your viewers to share your live and invite more friends. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> So uh, right now we just got an exciting view of this uh, cast iron pot here, at least until it comes to a boil. However, I don't think that will take very long. One of the things I love about cast iron is the way it uh, boils water so fast. So, um, and, and as I said, because uh, most of the uh, other stuff on uh, TikTok Live is really... Besides the arguing going on, we'll, there are probably there's probably someone usually from Asia hawking some silly product or another, um, or the uh, gamers. Well, the gamers at least on TikTok Live are interesting, and then of course there's the uh, jailbait. Well, not jailbait. Uh, fortunately, the jailbait seems to uh, be a lot less frequent than it used to be. Thank goodness. No, more likely they're uh, girls uh, sitting here uh, who are of age, which is good, sitting here uh, looking cute and trying their best to get gifts. And hey, they can do that. I mean, I'm not telling them not to do that. No, uh, I'm, I'm, my opinion is that TikTok Live is uh, largely full of crap. Um, which, again, is one reason why I wanted to do this as, to, as something of an alternative. What grease do you use for cleaning? Um, gr okay, yeah, cleaning cast iron, I mean, all you really have to do is just uh, give it a, a good brisk with a nice uh, Scotch-Brite green scrubby under uh, hot water. And then we put it on the uh, stove to dry here. And I, after that, once it's uh, completely dried off and the uh, cast iron is hot, I like to rub it with Crisco. Uh, because, uh, I mean, I, I know it's common to use uh, just typical vegetable oil to grease your cast iron pans, but uh, with um, vegetable oil, as you know, uh, that can go rancid rather quickly, especially if you don't use your cast iron for a couple of days, it will start to get sticky and rancid. Um, Crisco, on the other hand, is processed and it will stay fresh, relatively speaking, uh, after being uh, smeared on your cast iron for at least a couple of months or so. So uh, it's much, you know, it's much more durable and it, it makes uh, managing cast iron much easier. So, hello, uh, XOXO talk, you right, okay. <laughs> I'm glad I'm right, I guess. <laughs> 
Um, One second. There we go. Got to get a pot holder. I'm not sure we're at the point yet. Oh, yeah, the water is steaming. Uh, and I would say we'll probably be uh, boiling in a couple of minutes or so. So, yeah, I mean, all we're really doing, as I said, is we're going to be boiling up some cornmeal until it becomes uh, a thick pudding, which, again, is the same way they make you make oatmeal, of course. Um, and, again, hasty pudding, it was called hasty pudding, and uh, but the name hasty pudding seems to have been forgotten largely, except by historians. Uh, people know grits and they know oatmeal. Well, they especially know oatmeal because these days, of course, you've got those uh, oatmeal packets, um, you know, that you can just nuke in the uh, for a couple of minutes and you have oatmeal. And there are even still folks who make oatmeal the old-fashioned way. Uh, but uh, even making grits is not as common as it used to be, of course. And I'm not criticizing our modern day society because I'm just saying, saying things have changed. Because these days, of course, you don't have to do this. All you need to do is get a frozen burrito out of the oven or a frozen pot pie or, uh, or uh, some ramen noodles, which you can, of course, uh, you know, make uh, really quickly. I like oatmeal every morning, Scottish oatmeal. Oh, that, that all sounds good. Of course, if it's Scottish oatmeal, how much booze do you have to put in it, into it? No, I'm sorry, I think that would be Irish oatmeal. My apologies. <laughs> uh, do you ever use lard? Yes, I use lard, and I have used lard to, uh, you know, to season my cast iron sometimes. Uh, I find, as I said, the Crisco does a uh, really good job, and frankly, Crisco is a little bit less expensive than lard. And that's just how things go these days. All right. Um, <clears throat> again, we're really just waiting for the water to boil, but it should not be uh, be uh, that long. Um, oh, yeah. In fact, I think we're starting to see the steam now. I think we've got it. Bye, Joe. I believe we've got it. So, let's get this going. Yeah, this is definitely boiling now. Yay. So this is really just a matter of putting in our cornmeal. You're supposed to use about half a cup of cornmeal or so. As you can see, I'm eyeballing it because I'm just doing it in the way they used to do it back then. I mean, after all, if you were a uh, Civil War soldier or revolution or a soldier in the, uh, you know, in the 1700s, you didn't use a measuring cup. You just simply dumped your water into the pot and uh, dumped your uh, cornmeal in. Um, in, these, in those days, they actually called it Indian flour. <laughs> and yeah, there's a lot of history behind that, and yes, there is a lot of racism behind that, so I'm only mentioning it just because it happened. Uh, so yeah, you dumped the cornmeal in, and it's really just a matter of stirring it around, uh, you know, to uh, try to get rid of these lumps here until it uh, until it thickens and that won't take very long because it looks like this water is uh, boiling quite nicely so for anybody who is just joining this TikTok, yes that's uh, what we're doing here we are simply uh, making a hasty pudding which is really no more than cornmeal boiled down into a thick uh, into a thick pudding. So um, it's really just a matter of patience more than anything else. What temperature do you set your stove to boil water? Um, I have the uh, gas stove on about medium so that the flame, as you can see, it brought this water to a boil in uh, just a few minutes or so. That's one of the many things I like about uh, uh, cast iron. It does a great job boiling water. And one thing I like about this gas stove is it gets this uh, cast iron pot really hot, really fast. And once this is thick enough, it will be uh, ready to serve. 
And I'm hoping this doesn't take too long. Although if we look at the level of this water here, I would say that this water is actually reducing uh, pretty quick. I mean, you can look at the, look at, uh, the uh, level here all along the edge. So yeah, this is not going to take long at all. Hmm. Oh dear. Yeah, I, I can see there are a couple of a little black flecks in here and that may very well be the seasoning. Oh well. Uh, that's not poison or, or toxic or anything like that. That's not going to kill me. That's just simply the seasoning, which was, uh, you know, burned on, um, as I said, Crisco. So I'll live with it. I mean, it's, I mean, again, I'm not going to die from it. I'm the only one who's going to be eating it. So, um, besides, again, back in the old days and back in those days when you were in the middle of the woods or whatever, uh, cooking this stuff over a campfire, I'm sure you got other things into the, uh, into the, uh, boiling, uh, pot that, uh, nobody minded eating. You know, we're talking like little bits of dirt or twigs or leaves or the like. So, so, and uh, I don't recall anybody dying from that. And if anybody is triggered by this, oh well. Boiled oatmeal in Crisco. <laughs> Not oatmeal, it's actually cornmeal. Um, because again, once again, this is, uh, that was the recipe for hasty pudding. I'm actually out of oatmeal at the moment. That's one reason why I wanted to give this a try. Another is because it's a new recipe that I have not done before. And that in itself made it uh, appealing and I wanted to try it. So alongside their yummy hardtack bread, they ate hasty pudding or grits. Uh, which, as you can see, was an incredibly tasty, fulfilling, and healthy meal for uh, soldiers in those days. <laughs> of course, in these days, we have MREs, so which are, I'm sure, just so much more nutritious. <laughs> MREs, meals rejected by everyone. Hello, uh, Gary, as well. As I said, I know folks are uh, just scrolling through TikTok live, seeing whatever catches their eye. And hopefully the sight of a pot being stirred will be more appealing than uh, the usual talking heads or screaming heads, I should say, uh, that we see on TikTok live, along with the gamers. I noticed the snake the snake game has returned to TikTok Live. I think, it, in fact, I think it was around this time last year. You know, that snake that goes around the screen eating the apples or dots or whatever they are. And yeah, I do believe it's starting to thicken. This is reducing pretty fast, as you can see from the water level here, which means this is not going to take much longer. And just think, join the army. You get to uh, eat wonder. You get to eat fantastic feasts, travel to uh, exotic locations, mingle with the locals, and kill them. <laughs> All right. What you making here? Asks Michelle. Once again, we are making hasty pudding which is a very simple and fast recipe from the days of the Revolutionary War to, and the Civil War. It's also known as grits. Because, although I understand grits are usually boiled in milk, uh, but as you can see, we are just simply boiling this in water. And while I could have boiled it in milk, I want it to be authentic. And yeah, that's all it is. Uh, water and boiled, uh, boiled cornmeal. Although I did uh, add some salt to the water. Once it's thick enough, we will serve it 
and we will sweeten it with uh, maple syrup. Because again, in those days, uh, sugar was something of a luxury. So instead, you usually use things like maple syrup or molasses to uh, sweeten your uh, hasty pudding, or your grits for that matter. And I figured this would be something of an alternative as well. A recipe from the days before breakfast cereals, before uh, Kellogg invented cornflakes, before Weetabix, I think. Definitely before shredded wheat, puffed wheat, and puffed rice. Does anybody still eat puffed rice and puffed wheat? <laughs> because again, in the in the we're talking now like maybe the nineteen seventies or so when we were kids, and our family did not have a lot of money, we usually went for uh, for the cheapest breakfast possible, which usually meant eating a lot of puffed wheat and puffed rice. Anyway, this stuff is definitely starting to thicken up. So this hasn't taken very long. Once again, as the title of this video notes, this is Hasty Pudding, a recipe from colonial America to Civil War America. After that, I guess, society changed Although, as I said, we still have oatmeal today. We still have grits. We, what we don't have is hasty pudding. Hopefully you can hear this. Mm. You know, the smell of the cornmeal is actually nice. It smells like corn. <laughs> What a shocker. But yes, this is again the type of breakfast they made during the uh, Revolutionary War days. Nice and simple and cheap and fast. And the fact that they don't talk about it much <laughs> shows you just how tasty it probably was. <laughs> I'm, I would likely probably put this along the same level as hardtack bread in terms of taste. <laughs> so I realize that does not exactly make it very appealing. Well, it was like you had to eat it or starve. On the other hand, you didn't die from it. But yeah, I can actually see the water level going down, so... And it's definitely starting to thicken. Sort of. <laughs> well, I'll just wait until it's uh, reduced some more. Hello, Track Peterson, and hello, Boogie Wife. Nonetheless, as I mentioned, hopefully this will be something of an alternative to the arguments taking place on TikTok Live. You know, the arguments that they call debates, even though they're not. They're just really trolling more than anything else. Which is why they always have these so-called debates over the same subjects over and over. You know, politics, religion, I haven't looked on TikTok Live uh, in at least an hour or more, but I know for a fact it's, it's all of the same stuff. It always is. <laughs> there we go. Now it's just beginning to thicken now. And of course, the whole point of the boiling to reduce it is as well to cook this cornmeal so that it's not raw.
And anyway, once this is all done, I will make a short video of this. Assuming it's successful. This piece. Here we go. The lumps are starting to go away. Yay. So, again, welcome to Hasty Pudding. No, not the Harvard Hasty Pudding uh, Club. The real thing, or Hasty Pudding Society, sorry. The real thing. Somehow I'm pretty sure this video is not going to go viral and people are not going to start uh, eating hasty pudding. But at least it provides a little bit of entertainment. Best of all, this was all done in a made in the USA cast iron Dutch oven. I'm actually fascinated by the way I can see the water level reducing. Yeah, this part here is where it started. But yeah, it's definitely starting to get thicker now. So at this point, I think we only have a couple more minutes, I hope. I mean, it's also boiling hot, so I'm gonna have to cool it off a little bit before I can eat it. are mesmerizing. Yeah, what kind of geek uses a word like mesmerizing? Again, apparently the term hasty pudding comes from my home country of New England. Where, as I said, in the south, this would be grits. And now we're starting to get somewhere. Still very thin, but it's getting closer. Actually, I better get out a bowl. doesn't burn, although I think it's pretty difficult to burn. I'm wondering if this was actually what they made as gruel in the, um, in the medieval days. Well, no, actually, no, they didn't have corn in those days in Europe. Uh, corn, of course, came from America. So more likely oatmeal would probably be closer to gruel. Yes, we are getting towards Christmas and a Christmas carol and Ebenezer Scrooge eating that sour gruel that starts with the hallucinations that he thought he was having. But we're definitely getting somewhere now. Now it's definitely starting to thicken, although it still has a ways to go yet. It is still very watery. American pudding is considered to have a, a consistency something like this, whereas in Europe, especially in Britain, a pudding 
was considered to be a uh, bread or sponge-like boiled, I guess you could call it a cake. <laughs> I'm wondering if this is where we first started seeing pudding as something with this consistency. down the sides. Hello, Trini. Welcome to my uh, TikTok live where we are making a colonial revolutionary war or civil war era dish called Hasty Pudding. Which again is basically grits. Although in the South, when you made grits, you did so by boiling milk. Here, it's just boiled water. Because it was the type of thing that soldiers would make when they had nothing but cornmeal. All right, oh good. Now we're starting to actually get some real thickness to it. It looks like when I scrape it across, we're starting to see gaps. So it's not, it's really getting to the point where it's not entirely liquid anymore. I'd say at this point, it'll be done in about another minute or so. It's probably hot enough. I can turn off the uh, flame, in fact, because this iron will certainly boil it to the point where it should get nice and thick. It's getting better, all right. I do want to get it where it's nice and thick with a consistency similar to that of <laughs> pudding. If I have to put the heat on again, I will, but I'm hoping that's not necessary because I do want it to cool off at least a little bit you know, so that I don't burn my mouth when I eat it. Nonetheless, this is looking pretty good now. All we really needed was patience. There we go, it's getting thicker by the moment. minute of this and I think it will be ready to serve yes if anybody does cosplay or reenactments probably familiar with uh, something like this at least Civil War reenactments definitely not anime or cart or uh, superhero cosplay <laughs> We are almost done. Yes, this is definitely looking like a pudding. Yum, yum. Doesn't that look yummy? <laughs> you can tell this was what they called a peasant food in those days because the peasant foods almost never looked good. And yet, those peasant foods were usually delicious, and they've certainly lasted throughout the centuries. And most importantly, people didn't starve. Making a roux? Actually, Timothy, I'm making hasty pudding, which is really no more than cornmeal boiled down to the consistency of a pudding. 
And in fact, I think we are at uh, just about the right point now. Maybe a few more seconds. Yes, um, as, as I said earlier, people know grits and they know oatmeal, but hasty pudding seems to have been largely forgotten. However, this is what soldiers during the days of the Revolutionary War and the Civil War often had for breakfast. They simply boiled down some cornmeal and chowed down. Doesn't that sound yummy? Yeah, I think we are good now. All right, so let's move this over. Oh, fun, haven't made that in a while. Oh, good, you know about this. Congratulations. All right, let's get this bowl down right about here. Move the light a little bit. Yeah, because I'm fussy like that. Get a better scoop. There we go. And yes, we do sweeten it. Because, I mean, while in an emergency or if you absolutely had nothing else or you were starving, yes, you just ate it like this because there was no choice. <laughs> However, if you do have a choice, you certainly do want to sweeten it. Oops, there we go, getting it all over the place as usual. And one more. And so to sweeten it, in this case, Let's pull out some good old maple circle. Because in the olden days, sugar was something of a luxury. Interestingly enough, these days, <laughs> these days, maple syrup now costs more than sugar. Mm, I hope I didn't use too much. Actually, what kid would ever say there's such a thing as too much syrup? Besides, this is not, besides, there is, I mean, the um, cornmeal is actually not sweet anyway. So, I don't think I'm going to regret that. And finally, one more thing. And this, on the other hand, is a sign of luxury. And that would be a pat of butter. All right, there we go. So yes, this is a relatively authentic soldier's breakfast from the days of the Revolutionary War and the Civil War. Hasty pudding, which, which I've said several times already, in the South is better known as <laughs> grits. Now that it's all mixed together, well, I guess I'm just going to have to try it, won't I? So, here we go. Well, it's hot for one thing. Mmm. Mmm. Actually, hey, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, and in fact, the uh, syrup did not make it overly sweet. So I guess I used the right amount. And I can taste the butter. This is actually pretty good. Mmm. Let me try it again, just to be sure. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is different. Um, I am, I'm giving this a thumbs up. I really expected this to just to be bland and tasteless, but hey, I think, yeah, wow. I'm gonna have to make this again. I made this really out of curiosity, but I'm, 
as I said, I am liking this. Mm. So, yeah. I would have to say the syrup was essential, though. Mm. I really like the uh, taste that the maple syrup is giving it. I think even better than sugar. So I would have, I would want to suggest, folks, if you want to try this, follow the original recipe. You know, and that is simply all I used was water. I didn't use milk. I bet milk would taste would taste good too. But all I used was water. I boiled down the cornmeal for several minutes until it got to this consistency. Uh, I did add some salt to the water before I boiled it. But as I said, I've flavored it with or sweetened it with maple syrup and butter. And mm, mm, I, as I said, I like it. I think I, I'm surprised how much I'm liking this. Mm. So. My gramps was a cook in Vietnam, so he taught me a couple war recipes like SOS. Oh, yeah, love SOS. But here we go. I will, I will actually say, Timothy, look this up. Again, the recipe is simply called Hasty Pudding, and it's pretty easy to find. It didn't take long to find it. But yes, go for the very basic recipe. There are a couple of them of uh, recipes out there that uh, really uh, make it more fancy and they add spices and ginger and everything and I have no doubt that would all work great. But just what just what we have here, hmm, I'm liking it. So I will say again, give it a try folks. It's something different. And um, as I said, I'm calling this a pleasant discovery. So thank you very much. I mean, there's really not much else we can say other than we have hasty pudding. So thank you again for your time, everybody. Uh, this was all made, as I mentioned, oh good, I can do this, in a large cast iron Dutch oven. And I am not being paid for this. I'm just saying that I used cast iron to make it. But there we go. Thank you very much, everybody. And I've got to enjoy my breakfast now because I'm certainly going to enjoy this. Give this a try. I hope you've enjoyed this as well. Thank you for coming by and thank you for commenting. Have a good morning.